from potentially making up for a final season that made no sense, to the role it might play in HBO's rumored retcon of the original series, here's why this Game of Thrones open-world RPG has fans salivating. You have to admit, the franchise has a lot to make up for, especially after the disastrous eighth season, and a Westeros-spanning video game might be just what it needs. The last few episodes really missed the mark. I mean, none of the characters seemed to know what they were doing, and storylines that had been building up for years were resolved in a matter of hours. Seriously, Tyrion and Varys went from being calculating masterminds to bumbling fools. The White Walkers barely got past Winterfell, their Night King was defeated by a simple bluff from Arya, and while Jon Snow was revealed to be the heir to both the Stark and Targaryen dynasties, it had zero impact on his story arc. Oh, and don't even get me started on what they did to Daenerys. The Breaker of Chains deserved better than an overnight transformation into the Mad Queen. Sure, there were plenty of hints suggesting this would happen, but fans needed at least a couple of seasons to see her turning to the dark side rather than watching her legacy crumble in the span of a few episodes. In fact, I'd say that the legacy of the entire show was ruined by the final season, cause even HBO itself tries to pretend it never existed. We're living in the golden age of streaming, and the lockdowns of 2020 gave platforms like Netflix and HBO Max the chance of a lifetime. Billions of people were stuck at home with nothing to do, so they were willing to watch anything that had helped them pass the time. HBO tried to capitalize on this by advertising some of its best shows, mostly in that rotating carousel at the top of the home page. Everything from Six Feet Under to True Blood was prominently displayed. But you know what was missing? Game of Thrones. Yup, that last season was so bad that the network itself stopped pushing it to audiences. That's a pretty stunning fall from grace, and it's all because D.B. Weiss and David Benioff wanted to move on to greener pastures. You've got to understand, Game of Thrones is the biggest show HBO has ever made, giving the network its first global media franchise. The viewership alone broke all previous records, not to mention all those merch sales. And have I talked about the Emmys? Cause Game of Thrones won like 59 of them, which happens to be the most Emmys won by a drama series in history. Regardless, all the acclaim in the world wasn't enough to make up for the baffling last season, both for the fans and for HBO. Now, given how widely hated the show's become, why would anyone be interested in a video game set in Westeros? Well, the franchise has started to redeem itself somewhat, thanks in large part to House of the Dragon. The prequel series was touch and go at first, and those time jumps were a controversial creative choice for sure. But the show has mostly been successful in restoring faith among the fans. Winding the clock back a couple hundred years helped give the show some much needed distance, allowing the storyline to breathe without the burden of its predecessor's mistakes. It's fair to say that the Song of Ice and Fire franchise is experiencing a renaissance, so the timing is just right for an open-world RPG. I should probably mention, there's been no official confirmation of an RPG in the works. However, we do have a concept trailer from a YouTube channel called Teaser Play. Made with the Unreal Engine 5, the trailer provides a spectacular glimpse into Westeros complete with stunningly rendered versions of all our favorite characters. As soon as the concept trailer dropped, fans started going crazy at the endless possibilities, with many saying that they should start a petition to get Warner Brothers to develop the game. I have to agree with them, because there's a ton of potential here. For starters, Westeros is a sprawling continent with tons of major cities, along with smaller settlements that could serve as starting points for your adventure. Players might also be able to choose what house they belong to. And given the moral complexity of the HBO series, I can even see an alignment system kind of like Knights of the Old Republic coming into play. In case you don't know, Knights of the Old Republic is an iconic open-world RPG set in the Star Wars universe, and players can choose whether they want to follow the light side or the dark side of the Force. You can even become a Grey Jedi by finding a middle ground, so it's easy to see just how well this would work in the gritty fantasy landscape of Westeros. What's more, open-world RPGs tend to be some of the best video games of all time. Knights of the Old Republic definitely comes to mind, but Skyrim is an even better example. It drops new players into a fantasy setting pretty similar to that of Westeros, allowing them to enjoy vastly different experiences based on the choices they make. Dragon Age 
Inquisition is yet another sword, and sorcery game took the world by storm, along with the Witcher series, which arguably took Skyrim's place as the king of open-world fantasy RPGs. A Game of Thrones RPG seems like a dream come true, and it's kinda weird that HBO hasn't already started working on one. After all, we've already seen plenty of games set in Westeros. Granted, most of these games were about as bad as the last season of Game of Thrones. Telltale's story-driven title is a notable exception, but there have been tons of subpar games to muddy up the waters. And I'm not just talking about those atrocious mobile games either. Cyanide tried to make a viable gaming product for the franchise twice, starting with the real-time strategy game, Genesis. At first, fans jumped at the chance to experience a thousand years of Westeros history and witness the origins of all the noble houses along the way. However, the rough gameplay mechanics ruined an otherwise brilliant idea, so Genesis had to go back to the drawing board. Their second attempt got moderately positive reviews, and while this wasn't enough to save it from obscurity, it's worth noting the classic action RPG vibe. There's clearly a precedent for Game of Thrones RPGs, it's just that the first attempt wasn't really worth playing. With the concept trailer receiving unanimous acclaim, it's high time that HBO started listening to the fans and finally give us something we deserve. Besides, George R. R. Martin's no stranger to the open world genre. He already has an epic RPG under his belt with Elden Ring. Martin got to flex his creative muscles with the game's world building, and it helped make Elden Ring one of the most popular games of the decade. Is it really so hard for him to do the same with Game of Thrones? Millions of fans have criticized him for prioritizing every project except A Song of Ice and Fire, so I'd say it's George's responsibility to satisfy the fans that made him a household name. Oh, and remember when I said that House of the Dragon was restoring the franchise's reputation? That's part of a wider revival with a bunch of other spin-offs on the cards, and Ryan Condal revealed something explosive in an interview. It all has to do with that prophecy from the books. You know, the one where a Targaryen had to sit on the throne of Westeros to save the world? Yeah, Weiss and Benioff kind of tossed that out the window. But you might have noticed how the original prophecy was mentioned in House of the Dragon, instead of the modified version from Game of Thrones. According to Condal, this is a straight-up retcon of the original series, and the order came from GRRM himself. Look, the whole point of the prophecy was that Jon Snow would become Jon Targaryen, take his place on the Iron Throne, and defeat the Night King once and for all. Instead of this long-awaited payoff, Arya killed the Night King with an almost comical bait-and-switch, and we got some awkward justification for why Bran deserved to be king. Maybe Weiss and Benioff wanted to subvert expectations, but you have to earn those twists, not just force them in for shock value. There's a Jon Snow sequel series in development too. So the prophecy mentioned in House of the Dragon could be an attempt at a do-over for the saga. An open-world RPG can be the ultimate palate cleanser for the bitter-taste Game of Thrones left behind, turning the final season into a minor speed bump instead of a permanent stain, and setting the stage for the Song of Ice and Fire to be told the way George intended. There you have it, folks. From the way it can help HBO retcon the iconic series, to its importance in making up for the unfortunate final season, this was everything you needed to know about the Game of Thrones open-world RPG.